News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukat Ali on TV One. And a uh, very good day to you and welcome to Newsline. Again, Newsline finds itself in uh, London, uh, in Richmond, and uh, our guest today uh, will talk about how uh, another aspect of raising revenue for the state is being almost willfully neglected uh, to the great detriment of the people of our country and the near empty coffers of our treasury. And he's, uh, my guest is a uh, activist lawyer, uh, usually representing uh, or almost always representing the people's interest, Mr. Nagananda Korituaku. Hello, uh, Naga, and welcome to the program. Hi, hi, Father. Sri Lanka is engulfed with all sorts of uh, challenges. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of it uh, centers around money, yeah. poverty, and so on. But also a lot of it uh, is to do with corruption. Uh, poor governance really usually causes that. Mm -hmm. But there's one aspect which caught my eye by listening to the several things that you're doing yeah. uh, out there. And one of that was, of course, uh, your claim. And you are a a uh, person retired uh, from the customs, customs service. service, the customs department, the revenue could actually be 1,800 billion or 1 1.8 trillion Correct. because you say there is corruption, but that's double what the customs are collecting now. Yeah. Is corruption at customs such a big item? Um, Absolutely, yes. Not just customs. Right. This, this institutionalized corruption for us, yeah. it prevails in the customs department, in the revenue department, and the excise department. These three organs are, departments are the major revenue generating government departments. Mm. Because of this institutional corruption, entire nation suffer. The fundamental reason for the institutional corruption is the breakdown of the rule of law. Right. And uh, you mentioned that I said that it can be double. Yes. Recently, this issue was taken up in the Court of Appeal. Right. About the loss of revenue. Right. Reason is, like other organs, even the Parliament, Cabinet of Ministers and the head of the state. Right? There is no rule of law prevails. All over, the, there is a breakdown of rule of law. It comes down to the bottom. Right, one of the organs suffer hugely the customs department. Right, and always. But, but what prompts you to say, uh, Mr. Nagananda, that revenue can be increased by double? Yes, that's what I want to explain to you. Mm. Right now, the department collects about nine hundred billion. Right. So the always for the custom purposes, okay, for the revenue revenue collection purposes. Value is always, okay, value for any commodity for the collection of revenue is the value declared by the importer. Right. Transaction value agreed between a buyer and a seller. Right. So that invoice is presented to Absolutely. Customers. Commercial invoice. Car okay. matter yeah. in where, where yeah. 16 billions of revenue involved yeah. because the, the, the defrauded for the simple reason Importer declared almost half of the value. Right. So it's a one such example. Yeah. Okay. And uh, almost in all cases, yeah. importers, you can't find fault with them. When there's a system failure, you get corruption all over. Yeah. So take for example. But what to talk, talk about how you're leading me towards an answer where we can make the revenue collection by customs not just 400 million more like the government wants them to. Yeah. But what you're saying is double by yeah. 900 yeah, billion. That's what I'm going to explain yeah. to you. Say, for example, one commodity. Yeah. Take, for example, this mobile phone. Yeah. Okay. And uh, if the actual transaction value, yeah. okay, for custom purposes is hundred dollars. Yeah. And the revenue, uh, I mean, ad valorem rate of duty is fifty dollars, fifty percent. Yeah. How much you pay for that? Fifty. Fifty. Right. If you declare. Mm. Instead of one hundred dollars, yeah. the actual transaction value. Mm. If you declare fifty dollars, what would be the tax you pay? Just twenty-five. Twenty-five. Mm. That is what exactly happened in the Department of Customs. Right. Importers for this because of this uh, total breakdown of the rule of law. Yeah. So the person who paid earlier hundred dollars. Yeah. Okay, and uh, 
de declare the actual valuation for the uh, commodity yeah. and pay correct duty yeah. and they bring down the value for custom purposes. That is to defraud the... Defraud the revenue. Yeah. Say earlier you declare $100, next year $80, again $60, $50, it comes down to about $30. Um, if we have any questions about this, uh, you can send an SMS 0772 and we'll t take the answers up on a forthcoming program. Carry on. Okay, this is okay. Now, now, the importer, yeah. now we declare, this, this is done with the connivance of the customs, okay? Right. Don't think that this is done by the importer alone. Okay. That's a connivance. This is why all these department works. Right. So when you declare lesser and lesser price yeah. for the custom purposes, and you pay less duty. Yeah. Earlier you paid $50 at the rate of 50%. Yeah. Now you paid $20, $30 like that. It comes down and down and down. Mm. Right? So, so at each stage you are defrauding the state of its revenue. At the, at the point of uh, payment of tax. Right. So when you play, uh, furnish a bill of entry for the custom purpose, eh? yeah. you won't declare the actual valuation. Right. That's why we took a value of $100. Yeah. No? Yeah. So earlier you declared $100, yeah. it comes down to $30. Right. So, so By false declaration. By false declaration for custom purposes, you won't declare the actual valuation. Right. So, so, so explain this other side to me. Mm -hmm. So an importer turns up with some paperwork for whatever the goods are. Let's say in this case a phone. Okay. Right? And he says, I've got a hundred phones here. Yeah. And here's the invoice. It's a hundred uh, it's actually fifty dollars each. Yeah. But does the customs have its own independent way yeah. of verifying the actual commercial value of a telephone? We are in what in what year now? It is available in the internet. Right. You can get the actual valuation of any commodity through the internet. But as a rule, does no. the custom use that? That is what is expected from the custom department. Right. As a but if they the were, key revenue but agency. But surely every transaction is not is not uh, bereft of fraud or includes fraud. Let's say on the in the instances where the customs are acting properly. Yeah. How do they verify that this button or this whatever? is the actual value for customs purposes is X. How do they do that? So because they do the verification. Right. How do okay. they verify? Verify from the other sources. We are member of the WTO. No? Right. Okay. Okay. Right. World Trade Organization. We are compelled to follow the World uh, WTO valuation agreement. Right. So Shrek therefore, is a, is a member, member they are signatory to that. Right. Okay. So when we are a member, we are expected to Verify the for when somebody declare value for custom purposes, custom department is expected to verify it so, for so, accuracy. So there'll be an HS code for yeah. every item. HS the, code. The, this phone, this this watch would have a HS code. Yes. And therefore you know that under this HS code, the value would be X. Yeah, this particular commodity, yeah. this is the value. Right. Everybody knows so that. That's how because of the corruption, yeah. corruption, yeah. importer declare lower value with the connivance of the customs officer. Right. And you pay less duty. Right. How do you okay, you're you're a former customs okay. officer. Yeah. You can't be very popular with yeah. them now. Yeah, right? absolutely. <laughs> right? Yeah. So but, but what I'm saying is <laughs> yeah. how uh, Naga, how do we get to the bottom of this? How what positive steps can be taken, should be taken to Eradicate. eradicate this form of corruption, which is obviously blatantly happening. Yes, it How, can be done. Do do? It can be done. How? Provided it start from the top. Okay. Start from the top. When okay. you mean the top here, what does the top From mean? the head of the state, okay. the finance minister, the director general of Kasi, it has to come from the top. Right. You can't find fault with the officers. Right. I never find fault with okay, the officers. So That's a system failure. Okay, so what does the head of state do? Head of the state now, the current head of the state is the Vikram Singh, he is yeah. the Minister of Finance. Right. I have exposed this in many occasions. Right, but what should he do now? He should, he should have the right man at the head of the department, of the custom department, okay? And he must give directions to make sure the proper collect, the proper, the department of custom collect the proper revenue for the government. Right. The main purpose of the custom department is to collection of revenue and prevention of smuggling. Do you do you have designs on being the head of customs? Why not? Are, is this a formal application for you to be the head of customs? Is that what you want? I don't want to. No. Okay. No. Well, I just thought ask because just in case my viewers yeah. say that oh well come on this is he is making an application to be the head of customs. 
So I'm glad you're saying that that's not the case. But how... Do, I'm there to help anybody. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Well, you know, how do you say what should they do? One, two, three. The, the practical steps. Restore the rule of law. Right. Customs law introduced by the British right. about 200 years ago. Is it wrong now? No. Nothing wrong with the customs right. law. Okay. The failure is the implementation. So there's, there's a lack of implementation. Yeah, absolutely. Because I took one case to court of law right. and proved. Without right. mentioning names. No, without mentioning. Okay. Yeah. I, Tell me that story I, 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 without mentioning okay. names. Because I, okay. I custom mean, officer, right. Okay. Yeah. Customs officer. Okay. Customs officer. Because the system failed here. Yeah. When the importer comes to him, he increases the value by 5%. Right. And then the importer goes to his, op, or the, uh, that is called, sub, uh, I mean, the appraiser. Right. Then it goes to the superintendent. Right. Okay. And he increases it to 10%. What? What? The... For the custom purposes, they increase the value. Okay. Then he goes to the deputy director. Yeah. And if he is not happy, mm. there is no hard and fast rule for this. Right. Maybe 20% or 30%. Right. When you go to the director, sometimes it goes up to 50%. 50% of the... Value declared for custom purposes increased by 50% now. Because the customs don't agree that that's the figure. Ag because the custom feel every fellow... Under, under value. Under value. That is the general thing, no? Yeah. General. General tendency is always importers to declare lower value for custom purposes to defraud the revenue of customs. Yes. Okay. So one, right from one, the beginning, there's this element of corruption in the making. Is there now in this particular case? I am not referring to the particular names. Okay. No. Yeah. And so he, the court. The, this particular importer imported item X. Yeah. And when he went to the customs, uh, the customs said, No, 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 no. This you've got to. This is undervalued you need to increase it by 5%. Then they said 10%. Then they said 20%. Then they said 30%. And our importer says, no, no chance in hell. I am not paying because I have not undervalued. Yes. Then what happened? And then one fellow cut the invoice value and put 5%. Yeah. Second fellow cut it and put 10%. Yeah. Third fellow 30%. Yeah. Fourth fellow 50%. When I took it to court of law. Yeah. So judge couldn't believe it. How come it happened like this? Yeah. He threw it away. He threw it away because the importer, importer said, I have not undervalued at all. He was a bona fide. Bona fide importer. importer. And he said, I can pay 5% or about 60,000. Yeah. But for the court matter, it cost him a lot of money. Yeah. But said, I don't care. I will on take it to court. On principle, I'm not. I on principle and it was taken to court of law. Yeah. And the court straight away made an order against the Director General of Customs to accept the declared value. Because I mean, by the case, import in this particular in this case. case. Because the importer was a bona fide. Bona fide. But whereas, yeah. more, almost 99% of the cases, yeah. the, the practice is, yeah. okay, importer deliberately do undervaluation yeah. and pay lesser duty. What happens there, okay, so the officers who undermine the value for custom purposes, they, they, this practice is going on and on for a longer period of time now. Yeah. So if I am the importer, and you are the officer, you know how many shipments that I have imported declared lower yeah. value. Yeah. So say 15 shipments or 10 shipments or whatever, later on that you pass the information to another officer. Right. And say, go and catch the fellow. Yeah. Right. I know he has imported this particular item, 15 shipments, mm -hmm. and uh, you can raid his business premises, you can search his computer, mobile phone, WhatsApp messages or any other right source of information and collect this genuine information. Right. Then the group of officers raid his place of uh, I mean whatever the business premises and take take over all this paperwork. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then they find the actual valuation. Right. So wh earlier with the connivance of the custom officer, mm -hmm. he paid a lesser duty, maybe about fifty percent or thirty percent or whatever. Because it's undervalued. Absolutely. Then. Now he is asked to pay, uh, and the officers now earlier, they get, when they do the undervaluation, this share of profit, okay, whatever the profit they make through undervaluation, difference, 20%, 30% goes to the customs officer, whereas the 70% goes to the businessman. Right. Okay. Are you, are you saying this with real knowledge? Why not? Right. Um, Absolutely. Right. And then, right, now, they make black money. Now, easier for them when the businessman is caught, okay, mm. 
and when it's imposed, now they know the actual valuation. Yeah. Okay, say for the 10 shipments or 15 shipments, they impose, they say now there's an undervaluation and defrauding of revenue of 50 million. Yeah. So they catch you, okay, and ask you to make a confession. Right. This is what happens. Yeah. Then you say, no, I have not done anything wrong. Right. But officers know that they have done something wrong. Then the customs law provides, okay, there's a provision of law in, in the customs or ordinary, take him straight away to the magistrate and put him behind bars in the remand custody. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's legally allowed. Allowed. And then when you are in the remand custody, customs officers are empowered to ask the prison authorities to produce him before the customs. Right. While he is in the remand custody, right. then he produced before customs and then custom officers ask, are you ready to pay? Right. Now you spend two weeks now, yeah. do you want to wait there for another month? Hmm. Sometimes he may say, no, I am not ready. Then he is taken back to remand. Because when they produce him before magistrate, they inform the court, you have no authority to grant bail, you have to go to the high court to get a bail. Mm -hmm. Right. Under exceptional circumstances only, the bail can be granted. That's, the, that's the legal... Yeah, that is the, the law. law. So, when he spent there for a month or two or three, yeah. he collapsed. Okay? He collapsed. As in the importer collapsed. He collapsed. And then he agreed Medically to pay. collapsed. Right? In more, almost all cases it happened. Yeah. Then he pay. The revenue, uh, the, uh, I mean, whatever the amount of def money defrauded. Right. So wh who gets that money? Yes, I was about to ask you, who gets that money? Is Does it all go to the treasury? No. One third goes to the, 50% goes to the custom officer's management and reward fund. Right. Other half goes to the revenue. Right. Okay. And uh, So when it's a fine, let me get this right now. When it's a fine imposed, mm -hmm under the customs ordinance for whatever reason because you undervalued, you got caught, yeah. you smuggled, whatever. Mm -hmm. From the revenue collected as a fine, yeah. half, 50% goes to the revenue. custom, customs o officers Office. rewards section. That's right. The balance half, 50% goes to the state revenue. treasury. Mm -hmm. Okay. If this, if there was no fraud, and if the duty was collected in the normal way without fraud, all that money collected would go to, to the, the revenue. To the revenue. I just want to make that point. Carry on. Yeah. So, so, so you understand. I, I believe that the, 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 I mean, who watch I'm this sure program? Our viewers will. Yeah, absolutely. Will now, this. now, if the revenue yeah. collection, I mean, process. Yeah. Okay. It's a transparent. Yeah. And known to everybody. Yeah. And then the importers. Because one, when one person import declare a lower value, yeah. and the genuine businessman can't survive in the market, right. he's compelled to do the undervaluation. Right. Because you declare lower value and pay less duty, I have to pay, pay, more, more, I mean, pay more duty. Mm. So I'm compelled to do the undervaluation, mm. and in order to, because there is a, always in the, in the trade, yeah. trade practice is difficult to do any kind of a trade where yeah. there is a competition, yeah. unless both, all parties declare the actual uh, valuation and pay, yeah. one person do undervaluation, therefore the other fellow also compelled to pay. Right. So the process has to be, yeah. the government must design a system, yeah. okay, and the Director General of Customs must give a clear direction, right, and that is to make sure system, the department of custom, the collection of revenue, entire system has to be transparent and the business should be, should be able to find out the actual value for custom, acceptable for custom purposes through the customs website. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, when you, then you know right. what is the value for this particular commodity right. and the officers can't have two sets of invoice, okay, in the file, one file for undervaluation purposes, and one file. Ah, one file with the genuine valuations, okay, for the imported commodity. Right. If you can get rid of the system, as we discussed at the very beginning, revenue can be easily doubled. And so instead of 900 million, billion? It can be 1.8. 1, 1,300 billion, which is what the ta 
the target, target of the government is, it could actually be 1,800 billion and perhaps more. Absolutely, because the system is collapsed. Mm. So there are, I must tell you, the other officers will think that I find fault with every officer. Yeah. They are a very good officer, better than this 225. Right. Okay, they are much better officer. They will really not do it. always goes to this 225, yeah. which is, you know, it's neither here nor there. Yeah. But, but tell us, practical steps. Yeah. The Minister of Finance, what can he do to tighten up this process? So you can't expect that to happen in Sri Lanka. Well, but we're talking about it. No, we no, no. To, you, who is the minister know. in charge of finance? Well, it's... Rani Likamzinga. Yes. So when, when the cabinet of ministers are also corrupt, you can't expect that to happen, no? That's well, what I said. You ask me whether I'm, I'm willing to join the custom department. Yeah. There's no point there. You can't do it like that. No. So when the okay. system collapses, you can't expect... Yes, but I mean, yeah. it's very general and so yeah. to say that, you know, we know corruption is there, but uh, you can't. We can't call any particular one corrupt until it's proven in a court of law. Yeah. So we need to give this disclaimer here. But in a practical, uh, in a practical scenario. Okay. So the minister says, "I'm not willing to accept all this nonsense." So, is is it uh, sort of entrusted to like the revenue task force of the customs mm -hmm. to fully implement? Uh, is the RTF full of good, decent people? They are very good for people. They are capable of doing a lot of work there. Yeah. And make sure that the re proper revenue of uh, the revenue is collected for the government. But as I said before, if you if you let me talk freely, yeah. Okay. The, I have enough. I mean, evidence about the the abuse of power by these politicians, particularly the person in charge of finance. Yeah. Okay. There was a recent case. There's a recent case of, you know, when we can't buy gas, okay, yeah. buy gas, the World Bank gave us 75 million US dollars. Yes, I, I know what you're saying, uh, Naga, but, you know, my question to you is slightly wider. No, no, what I say, yeah. when, when the minister himself, in yeah. that particular place, defrauded over three billions of public funds, yeah. you can't expect such a person to enforce the rule of law in the government but department. It, it, no. it, is a, it is an allegation. Not allegation. It's not allegation, it's yeah. a proven fact. Yeah. A proven but tender. Proven, but not, not proven in a court of law. No, not tested court, in a court of law. No, no, you are wrong there. Right. Because, because the valuation approved, approved by the cabinet was $96 per ton. Yeah. Finally, it gave it to $129 All right, per you're ton. About that. Yeah, that. Yes. So finally, I had to withdraw that court, court action because the court failed to give an interim relief. Therefore, they paid at the rate of $129 right. yeah, so and they defrauded the revenue. That's, that's obviously waste. Yeah. But yeah. talking about uh, the customs yeah. um, uh, itself, okay. should, in your opinion, yeah. as a former customs officer and yeah. now on the other side trying to fight corruption, how do you believe that the Director General of Customs must address this issue? How should he do it? Should he entrust it all to one department like the RTF mm -hmm. and say, listen, every single shipment, you're going to look at it? No. It is impossible, no? Right. These are the, as I mentioned before, I think customs is the major revenue earner for the government. Yeah. Then comes the inland revenue. So therefore then it has to be uh, clicking on all, all uh, sorts of... Uh, absolutely. The, the, it, the, it has to be installed. The rule of law has to come for, uh, from top to bottom. Enforcement of the rule of law. When the head of the state, the cabinet ministers and the MPs are corrupt, you can't expect the public officers to be genuine. No, you can't find, I mean, whoever, officers will definitely do the right thing, yeah. provided it the top set an example. Mm. That is the problem in the custom department. So, But that seems to be a problem everywhere. Yeah. We, we need uh, to lead from example. Yeah, so that. But as you enter the uh, twilight years of your life, yeah. Mr. Kuri yeah. Tuaku, what is your feeling? What do you feel that in your lifetime, some semblance of decency uh, and integrity will pervade Sri Lanka's political system? Or do you think there's no? There seems to be no. I, I have no such hopes because even the citizens is corrupt in the country. Our citizens also corrupt. No, when you want to admit your child to a school, you give a birth, wrong birth certificate. You start from the beginning, mm. right? When the people themselves are corrupt and they promote the corruption in the... But they know... Is that a bit unfair? Because the, the system is such 
that the people have feel obliged to pay something. I, to I, 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 no, done. I disagree. Okay. When I want to admit my child to Ananda College yeah. for us, right? It is 1990s, okay? Yeah. And I was asked to get the birth certificate to an address close to the college, yeah. Ananda College. I refused. Right. Because you, you are brought in such a way, no? I reviewed, then, then I, my, my child, I could not ad admit him to the Ananda College. I had to admit him to a private college. Mm. But the college wanted me to give the... Uh, by, they asked me, why? What made you to not to give a wrong address? But I don't know whether you will do, but I refused. That's my, my son's original number, first certificate, public document. Mm. I refused to do that. So there are such people. So what I so say... unless we have a complete wholesale change in our country, mm. uh, corruption will continue, revenues will be down, and the people suffering Sunday. will carry on. That's what it is, isn't it? Corruption will continue. But right? unless we all change... If we how, all sit, how, how? It's not that easy task. It's not easy. Easy task, no, unless... No, 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 yeah. Uh, thank you very much. As we come to the end of our uh, program here in Richmond, um, London, Thank you very much for being on Newsline. Thank you. And that's the way it was uh, for Newsline. Wish you a, a great evening ahead as much as you can. And as always, God bless you all.